All right, everyone, here we go. How y'all doing? It's good to see anybody who's here. Well, let me know if you're here because uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, it's been a little while. I actually was away in Seattle um, at the wedding of a close brother of metal. <laughs> or perhaps a, um, a shield brother or something like that. I'm not sure uh, what would be the appropriate term in the terminology of the rider people or uh, the Orlanthi or one of these Gloranthan clans or one of these Gloranthan peoples. I'm not sure. But anyway, I was at the wedding of a close friend and wasn't able to stream as a result, but now I'm back and I am able to stream and I am willing and ready to do so. Uh, here we are in Sacred Time. Uh, in Elastina 7, which is the seventh year in which our darling chieftain, our, our wonderful chieftain, Elastina, has been in charge of our clan. Uh, in uh, last year, we see that 26 babies were born. We initiated 20 children as adults. The clan has 19 more people, 12 more head of cattle, and 7 more horses than we did last sacred time. Our crafters produced 20, uh, 44 cows worth of goods. Our market made a profit of 68 cows worth of goods. Maintaining our shrine took 16 cows and goods worth 32 cows. The priests were a little surprised to report that they saw a few arguments within the clan. Well, I'm not surprised by that because I believe I have a blessing devoted to uh, lessening the bullheadedness of my people, and that's something that was sorely needed. I'm sure that the people will still continue to be bullheaded to some degree because if they didn't, then they simply wouldn't be, uh, they simply wouldn't be riders. But um, it's working pretty well for now. And on that note, um, I want to put let's let's allocate our points for sacred time. Uh, this for anyone who is just tuning in for the first time is uh, how you are going to spend your magic points for the year. Um, this year I have nine magic points, actually ten total, um, and that's because I have been doing things that are pleasing to my primary gods, such as Elmal, the god of the sun, um, and Ekarna, the trade goddess, who figures very prominently into my clan. So, uh, what else are we going to do? Crafts, because we always like to have goods. We've been seeing how useful grafts, uh, crafts are time and time again. <laughs> and then grafts. We, for, crafts are useful for graft, meaning to bribe people into submission. Uh, what have we got? Okay, herds seem a little bit low, so I'm going to put one point in here into pastures. Uh, I'm going to put a point into exploring, because I would like to do a little bit of that this year. Still got six magic. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to see if I can get another trade route going, so I'm going to do that. Put one into war in case I end up having to get into a fight. Uh, my sense is that everything is good as far as people's disease and illness, or people's um, injuries and illness and so forth are relatively low in the clan, but we're about to find out exactly what the situation is as we proceed into year Elastina 7. Uh, we didn't take advantage of the opportunity to gain new spirits while the, while the omens were good. A chance like that doesn't happen often, and I hope we won't let it slip from our grasp if we get another. Well, yes, spirits were not really my focus. This is the um, the shaman person on the ring, so naturally she's concerned with this sort of thing. Um, I was more concerned with raising my clan magic and, and winning uh, a raid, which I did last year, and also conducting a ritual. I thought it was a pretty successful year. But everybody always, you know, it, it wouldn't be a, um, a rider clan if everybody agreed. The sharp-tongued rams of the Wallachering clan boast that they flew to the god's war to fight alongside their rebel god Orlanf. He rewarded them by infusing them with the spirit of the javelin, their emblematic weapon. This blessing grants them an edge in battle that will persist for the next seven years. Okay, so these, um, uh, the, this Orlanthi clan uh, ended up doing a ritual which empowered them in battle. Hopefully I don't end up facing them in battle. Uh, all right, let's see here. Many portents, I know I'm just uh, lifting up the iPad here because uh, the angle that I'm talking into this mic at sometimes makes it hard to see the iPad screen out of my peripheral vision here, but I'm making it work, folks. Uh, many portents attend a recent birth. Hen Molinaria of the Pant bloodline, which is one of the noble families um, represented on the clan ring, have given birth to their first child. The sky smiled in the moment of his birth. Zarlin, the wandering star, circled Elmal, the guardian, as he reached his celestial apex. A white calf and a black goat kid were born the next moment, minutes apart. The child is the first male born to the parts in some time. They claim that the male, the main male line, including Henmul, descended from Verlaro, son of your primary god Elmal. The family asks that the clan recognize the auspiciousness of this new arrival, who they have named Baron. All right, let's. Uh, I assume that everybody will want to do that, but let's see what the clan ring says. Verlaro proved himself the lesser of Elmal's two hialering children. His sister Osara we venerate as a goddess. Okay, so our chieftain is unimpressed by this. 
His eyes glow with divine mercy. It seems like a good sign. If he is of divine blood, a sacrifice will speed his way through life. Uh, well, we've got a decent number of goods, and we've been increasing our herds as well, so we can afford to make a little bit of a sacrifice. Uh, he will grow up to end this time of storms and death. Let's hope so. We can't go throwing a costly feast for every 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 pooling infant. Perhaps that's a uh, an obscenity. Pooling. Uh, due to adoptions, divine genealogy cannot be sorted out merely by studying the emblems embroidered on our story tent. A sacrifice might be nice, but we can't afford it. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, well, I, I don't know about performing a divination because that's going to use magic, and I believe that performing a divination may even use four magic, um, at least under some circumstances in this. So not, not just two, and I don't necessarily want to do that. I think that's a little bit too much magic for us to be using on something like this. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sacrifice. I've got some goods. Um, I think that the person on my clan ring who told me that they couldn't afford a sacrifice were probably was probably referring to the um, my herds, which are under 600, significantly under 600, and I would like them to be at 600 or above. That was a good rule of thumb for me in uh, playing King of Dragon Pass. But uh, I, I am, you know, I, I do have a decent number of goods, so I think I'll make a sacrifice. Priest said that Elmal had smiled on our sacrifice. Wonderful. Well, we don't know the impact of that immediately, but as with many of the random events in uh, in this game, we don't see the impact until later. I'm proud to say that our clan hall work is done. It now acts as a sacred space that helps us organize clan ventures. I'm proud of all the work our women put into the hangings. Well, so am I. Alright, so here we are. The Blazing Axe clan seems to be in very good condition, even though the clan mood is worried. The clan mood, you know, um, often it doesn't necessarily bear that much of a relationship to what's happening in the real world. Uh, let's see, we've got a hunting bounty going, we've got clan harmony going right now, probably because we just finished the clan hall. Um, it seems like in this game, one of the key ways to advance the plot is to do these ventures. Um, we have an ongoing venture, uh, clan hall feast, but we can start another. So, let's look into doing that. Uh, what does everyone say about what we should, well, we just did a feast, so, uh, let's see here. There don't seem to be the many bandits these days. Okay, that's good. It's not too early to prepare new fields. Uh, convert pastures to fields. Oh, yes, that was a recommendation that I got last year. Uh, until we have more warriors, we won't be able to engage in the more military ventures. Other clans would be interested to hear what we learned by exploring. So they don't make any recommendations. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so these look like... Um, they are repeated relatively uh, frequently. You can repeat some of these ventures, and some of them are only one-shot deals in the sense that you can only do, uh, you can only decorate your clan hall once. Uh, maybe someone will end up you know, setting fire to the declarations or something, decorations or something like that, and then I'll end up having to deal with it. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, let's see what else. So I'm going to go for this convert pastures to fields, and that's going to be handled by our David Dunham-looking friend. Uh, Atar Dar, who has been quite a reliable right-hand man to me for some time. Avardar led the clan in the arduous work of clearing stumps from some of our pasture land. He had a hard time rousing the clan of the time-consuming labor. People complained that he had asked too much too quickly. At least consecrating the newly cleared fields to Pella and Nialda went smoothly. The old fields became grazing land for our goats. Okay, excellent. Because I have, um, he did tell me recently that I needed more of that kind of space. So it looks like we at least uh, successfully did the task, even though, um, People complain, as they often do. A trade delegation from the Porganosi clan makes a surprising request. They wish to trade their cows for your horses. As members of a ram clan, they can't ride horses, because they don't worship your goddess Gamari. But they say they're willing to buy as many as ten horses. Uh, when Stelfor offered... Okay, so let's see. When Stelfor offered the horse secret to Thingus the ram, it was a trick luring him into ambush. He allure helped Gamari, not for the benefit of ram, but for the benefit of people who bear his name. Have a little fun at their expense. Where was buying horses? What will they think of next? Uh, okay, well, this guy uh, is a, um, a Karna worshiper, so he's okay with any trade that we make a profit of. He, he doesn't need to understand what their, their motives are, which to me are, are cryptic at the moment. Uh, we know nothing of horse trading, so we can easily gull them. Giving horses to rams is not unlawful, because it is so absurd no one would think to forbid it. I mean, if they eat the horses, is there some sort of negative consequence associated with that? Well, it doesn't seem to be the case. No one on my ring is telling me that, if, that, if it's true. Rams buying horses, what will they think of next? 
Well, I don't necessarily want to make fun of them if we can make a little money off them. Uh, I'm going to see what I can get out of them. How many horses are you willing to trade? Uh, let's say I will trade five horses. They knew that one horse was worth four cows and would not go higher. They said they would find horses elsewhere. Okay, so they said no deal, but that didn't seem to do that much to my uh, my clan morale. It didn't seem to have that much of a negative impact on me, so I'm cool with that. That I'm sure that Frank Zappa-looking guy is going to be back. So it's a uh, sea season, and uh, we want to um, we want to reach out a little bit to our neighbors. I think we've um, we've had a, a, a pretty good deal of success doing that uh, in terms of either forging alliances or forging trade routes and so forth. So. Uh, let's see what we can do as far as trade routes are concerned. We have four, we have six trading partners at the moment, and they're all the other rider clans. They may even be all of the rider clans that are currently in this uh, Black Eel River Valley. And of course, as you know, if you've been watching, there are other types of clans who are in this area, including the Orlanthi, the Rams, as they're referred to by my people, and also the, um, the, the, the Wheel people, who are the chariot riders. And both of them are a little bit more standoffish toward me. The chariot people are closely related to me, but they're somewhat arrogant. The rams are still kind of cryptic. You know, they do all these strange things that we you know, we saw an example of, such as attempting to buy horses even though uh, they don't ride horses. But uh, in any event, uh, let's see what we can do as far as getting another trading partner going. So we get the amber, bright eyes, gray wing, seven stars, star shine, and, and yellow hill. Let's see. Uh, what we can do, uh, okay, Griffin people are known for their poverty. I think that may be the reason why I haven't, uh, been focusing on them as a trade route candidate. Uh, we could see if we could set up a trade route with one of these groups here, uh, one of these Orlanthi groups. Kurander, known for being extraordinarily haughty, even by wheel standards. That is quite some degree of haughtiness, isn't it? Nar Onan, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Why don't we try talking to one of these Orlanthi clans and see if they would be interested in setting up a trade route? Uh, these Wallachening people. Apparently, we have um, relatively decent relations with them. And maybe it would be a good idea to get on their good side because they just got this javelin blessing, as we saw in a recent event. So um, let's see if we can let's see if we can set up a trade route with them. They may completely laugh at us, but you know that's always a risk that you take when you send out an emissary. <clears throat> and uh, you know at least we're trying. We devoted two. Okay, that will help an emissary. It certainly will. No point in giving horses to a ram clan. Well, I don't plan on doing so. That's the Grey Wing or someone else for battle, or, or for cattle, rather. Um, yeah, I mean, they're as concerned about the cattle situation as I am. Although, um, I'm not getting a warning in the clan screen that the herds are low. So it seems that I'm still in a relatively good place, even though I'm down about 200 cows from uh, when we started this game. Let's uh, let's go to these Wallachanings. Oh, actually, what we want to do is this. If we explore our own lands, we might discover some rare lands that our crafters, rare items that our crafters could use. Okay, that's something that I'm going to do. I will explore our own lands uh, at the next in the next turn. Another permanent trading route. This would be easier. If we found some exotic goods. Okay, interesting. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna approach these Wallachanings about the possibility of having a trade route. Avadar in a party could not find a place to cross the Black Eel River. Thousands of eels swarmed, and the horses wouldn't go near them. The Black Eel River runs past your clan and joins the Osrila. The Oslera. Performing the Taming the River ritual will allow you to cross it reliably. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, what if we made an offering to the river? Avadar threw trade goods worth one cow into the river. Our wealth disappeared, but the river gave no sign of caring. Avadar said that we had no ancient rituals dealing with the forces of waters. This was not a surprise. Okay, uh, in that case, what I'm going to do is, is turn back. 
uh, and I'm going to perform, I'm going to look into this taming the river ritual because it seems to me that, uh, yeah, establishing better relations with these Orlanthi who apparently do know how to cross the river will be beneficial to us, at least potentially, and it's better than just fighting them, which is largely what we've done so far. We talked a little bit, but it didn't really yield anything because we couldn't really understand each other, but perhaps they will speak the universal language of, of money, or in this case of goods worth a bunch of cows. Okay, there we go. Uh, sorry about that. It looks like my audio problems have been resolved. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but I reset my machine, and hopefully that resolves the issue. Um, so, we're back to what we were doing a moment ago. We were exploring. And uh, that's going to be Azardar again. Who, uh, ah, thank you. That's it. Thank you for the update, Devastating. I'm glad this is working again. Uh, I'm going to look for potential trade goods. While exploring obscure corners of your own territory, you find the remnants of an exploratory party. Insignia on the clothing identifies them as members of the Ruby Gate Clan. Whatever killed them left their honor belts behind. The gnawed and scattered bones indicate that they were attacked by animals or monsters. Or perhaps they died of exposure or disease and then became a feast for scavengers. The condition of the bones tells you they died at least several years back. <laughs> Indeed, it rode them down. Devastating said, uh, it looks like your mic rode all over the enemy. And it is a, it is a road mic. Um, and I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of compensation from my endorsement deal with them. Uh, thank you very much. No, just kidding. I don't have an endorsement deal with, with Road. Although I'd love to if Road, if you're, if Road people, if you're watching, if you'd be interested in that. I, I love your products. All right. Uh, let's see what the clan says I should do about this. Zarlin nearly died in the Land of Frost. Osara warmed his bones on the sun path, restoring him to life. What does she recommend doing? Ne nothing. We'll probably never figure out how they died. Well, that's true, but I don't know how much it helps. The, the ghosts may haunt these bones. That's That much is true, because ghosts are a uh, perennial problem. Let's see. There. I has uh, devastating. I think of him as my eighth ring member. Ruby Gate would be happy to have the honor bells back. Yes, I agree. Uh, let's see. If we leave the gold there, someone will sneak out to get it. Yeah, definitely not leaving it there. The Ruby Gate's already inclined toward us. You can never have too much influence on a neighbor. Okay, and everybody else. All right. Uh, all right. Um, I'm going to return both the remains and the bones. Or, and the belts, rather. Uh, who do you send to present them? Well, uh, apparently diplomacy is useful here. I have a lot of people who are excellent at diplomacy. Um, that's just the... Uh, <laughs> Devastating worships the trickster and gives plus one clan magic. He he is so he he'll give you additional clan magic, but he'll you know throw goat dung at visiting emissaries from other clans and start feuds with them. So you know it's a trade off like everything in the Lorenzo universe. Um, all right, uh, let's send Lenef. How many? Yeah, I guess I probably do want an escort because you you can never be too careful. There's always in the possibility of bandits or monsters or something like that. <laughs> yes, indeed, just like real life. The priest thanked us, inviting them to stay and watch as the bones were placed on a pyre and lofted to the sky world. Um, one thing that would be useful is to see, because we see when my morale goes up or down, right, it, with these indicators on the screen, it would also be useful to see um, whether the uh, morale or the, or the reaction of other clans toward us has changed. Although I guess we can basically assume from the flavor text, from the narrative, that that's what happened. The Starshine Clan announces a prize of 20 cows for the clan who brings them the biggest deer in the next two weeks. Hunting competitions bring glory both to the winners and to the clan offering the prize. Well, let's see. Uh, I've got 61 goods. I can afford to make a little sacrifice. Uh, with the mo the um, the ancient equivalent of doping. Uh, Dusta was a minor figure in Elma's retinue until the Exodus, when our need for him grew. I'll go along with the Circle's decision. Indeed you shall. Divine rituals do not always yield the desired results, don't I know it. If we offer more, the Starshines might increase their offer, but we won't go over 40 cows. Call on dust all you want, but no sacrifices. Oh, we can afford to sacrifice some goods. I'll go along with the Circle's decision. Dust all shall aid us. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make a little sacrifice to dust all. I'm going to grease the divine wheels, if you will. Carnivus leapt to the forest in the sky and said dust all would aid our efforts. Presumably that... That doesn't mean that Carnivus is dead. Who leads the hunt? 
Well, uh, apparently, okay, so whoever excels at food is going to be our champion here. Uh, okay, food renowned. Well, uh, Ernasta hasn't been doing a lot recently. He looks like the kind of guy who actually ought to be on the ring. Uh, but in any event, he's going to get to undertake this hunting mission and bring glory to the Bright Axe. How many others join it? Uh, well, we don't quite know how long something like this is going to take and how long our warriors are going to be indisposed as a result of participating in it. But I'm going to send um, the escort that typically would be called for if I were sending my people out into the wasteland, as it were, using the attack command, and uh, hope for the best. Ernasta found and killed a huge buck. When the contest was over, we learned that it was we had placed well, but the Griffins had downed yet a bigger stag. Ornasta said we had placed well, considering the number of competitors. Well, hopefully that, at least, that uh, burnishes our rep here in the Black Eel Valley. Uh, right now, I believe it is fire season. Yes, it is. This is the second, the second half of fire season. The clan mood is reserved. I believe that that is actually better. Uh, I bet the deer will end up indisposed for an awfully long time, Devastating says. Yes, but perhaps for a eternity. Uh... Morale stress. Now, why is there morale stress? Uh, oh, perhaps that's because of the um, converting pastures to fields, which people grumbled about. Well, I don't know how much we can really do about that. Uh, we did send out an expedition recently to meet... Oh, no, wait a second. Um, let's... Yeah, that was right. That, that was the attempt to reach the Orlanthi, and uh, we weren't able to do that as a result of the overabundance of eels in the river. So... Um, let's see if we can create a trade route with one of these arrogant chariot clans. Uh, okay, let's go back for a moment to our, our relations screen here and see who is uh, favorably disposed toward us here. Uh, okay, well all of these clans on the left side of the river, on the west side of the river here, I have trade relations with, which is great. Uh, Shining Blossom I also have. What about this uh, Griffin clan? Well, they're, they're known for their, even though my relations with them are relatively good, they're known for their poverty. Uh, and yet they are not these arrogant wheel people, and so I think that my likelihood of setting up a route with them is uh, going to um, be more successful than trying out those, the, those chariot people. So um, I'm going to see what I can do in terms of uh, creating another trade route with these Griffin people. They agree with the trade with us on a regular basis. We made a profit from the trip. That's excellent. So I'm now up to seven trade routes. That's wonderful. Being raided by the Porganosi. There are 124 of them. Okay, I believe these are, yeah, these are Orlanthi. Um... Uh, the Grey Wings warned us that 11 swords and 105 of our bows met them. Oh, and this reminds me that it might be a good time for me to build up some more fortifications. I already have, I think, three fortification structures, but in this game you can never have too many. Um, I guess those deer won't be in Seven Ages ride harder, says Devastating is no, or maximum deer two, deer on deer. Um, all right. I'm going to put some magic into this, and I'm going to try to drive these punks off. Uh, all right. So the Porganosi, they outnumber me a little bit, although I have more elites than them. Uh, let's see here. I'll try skirmishing with them. We shot at the Porganosi, and they performed some sort of ritual. The wind picked up. Our archers cursed it. Okay, so they did some sort of ritual to counteract my skirmishing. Uh, all right, let's see here. I'm going to try maneuvering. Eileen tried to maneuver our forces, but, but faltered when we faced the Pongosi war whoops. Whooping is quite a powerful technology in this. Um... Let's see here. All right, I'm going to advance. As we advance, the Porganosi move some of their forces into a reserve. Uh, in that case, I will fight fiercely. They fought fiercely, but not as fiercely as us. The battle began to swing our way. Eileen said that she thought she and the enemy war leader were well matched. All right. Let's fight fiercely some more. They countered our attack with their reserves. The battle can now turn either way. Well, the option to fight cleverly is not one that often presents itself, so I'm going to take that while I can. With much howling, fierce ram warriors pushed us back, okay? So I lost. 
We both took a lot of casualties. It was a bloody battle. Our magic defeated theirs, but their ritual kept blowing our arrows off target with its erratic winds. We were driven from the battlefield, and the Porganasi drove off fifteen cows and horses, which they had which they had trouble driving. Serves you right for trying to drive horses without being a heel or a worshiper. You heathens. Um, they stole twenty-one cows worth of loot. It would have been worse without our fortifications. Okay, at least they accomplished something. Due to our prompt healing, we saved four warriors. All right. Um. Well, I uh. Yeah, so unfortunately, a lot of people died on either side, and the, the raid probably, ultimately, was not worth it for them, but um, obviously not a good thing for me either. Uh, well, I've still got 54 goods. Um, what about uh, our fortification situation? We've got a ditch, stake perimeter, and a watchtower. Watchtower being, I think, the most essential fortification that you can get. Um, what else can I do here? It's harvest time, we need all hands, let's bring it in. Okay, I see here. We could use more warriors. We can still improve our fortifications, okay. All right, so it seems that um, the general consensus that this is not the time to improve our fortifications. Uh, I um, am still into this idea of increasing or, or um, increasing the peace, like they say in Boys in the Hood. Uh, with other members of our local area. We have the Salgarin, the Bright Eyes, and the Chav Ashdai, uh, all of, n none of whom like us. Uh, the Salgarini most respect our, ra our might, and the Shining Blossom Clan thinks the least of our might. Uh, they are not impressed by our small herds. I see. Other clans know us for our many shrines. Yeah. Well, that, that's certainly a strategy that uh, I tend to use in these games. And it, it, in, in this game, the cost of shrines is, is, is I think, significantly lower. Unless I'm not remembering King of Dragon Pass correctly. So I think having a lot of shrines is really the way to go. Uh, let's see. Um, who, is it, who is it that hates me? That actually is not... That... Um, is not clear from this map here. Uh, we have a few clans that are depicted here in red, but obviously not all of them hate me, so perhaps that's a little bit confusing. Uh, let's see, the, the Sagarin apparently at least respect my might, so perhaps I can send an emissary to them. Oh, I apparently already have, I believe that's what the check mark means. Uh, who have I not sent an emissary to? The Bright Eyes I've, I've talked to, the Chav Ashdai, well, I fought with them in any event. Um, but that's not quite the same thing. Naranan, I've talked to them. All right, how about these Chava Ashdai? I see if I can improve the relations with them. Oh, you, okay. So hate, I guess, is um, the equivalent of feud in King of Dragon Pass because we have the option here to resolve a feud. Um, although, well, that option doesn't specifically show up when it comes to the Chava Ashdai because they don't hate me. Uh, but I, yeah, for future reference, we can do that if we ever get into a feud. Um, all right, so I'm going to, um, since I've got a decent number of goods, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use any cows. I, I tend not to like using cows for sacrifices or giving gifts because cows are, are such a precious commodity. I, I tend to uh, prefer using goods. So I'm going to bring a gift to these Chav Ashdai. I've been trying to figure out how the Porganasi clan raided us, even though they aren't close by. Among us writers, that would be a big deal, something we might do if we're engaged in a feud. Apparently, rams think nothing of raiding anywhere in the valley. They must be exceptionally warlike or exceptionally powerful or both. I think that the former is the case, um, because I was able to defeat the Orlanthian battle um, at one time, and they also beat me one time. Um, but I don't see them as uh, so hyper-powerful that it's not possible to effectively take them on. We sent Balandry to give goods worth eight cows to the Chavashtai clan. They seem annoyed that we had sent a woman as our representative. They accepted our gifts with superior smiles. I think they are more favorably disposed toward us now, though wheels try not to show that they might like us because they're just jerks. Um, well, predictably, the word, they, they, they behaved like jerks, but um, we think that there was still, our, our, our endeavor still bore some fruit. And in the future, I'll remember to send male emissaries to Chav Ashdai. Um, a group of plant folk, sometimes known as elves, gathers in your foraging ground, and entering without asking, they show their infamous disregard for whose land is whose. Uh, elves encased Elma on the murder tree. That does not sound like the ideal location to be encased. Wood burns, he said, lighting an arrow. 
Uh, they can't eat that many berries, if they are even eating them. Whatever it is these tree people do. Blessings and wards are taxing, depleting our access to magic. Uh, a ward will have the longest lasting effect. If we bless them, they might give us something valuable in return. Attack them? That seems like an unwise idea. We don't know what these elves are capable of doing to us. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what if I did offer them a blessing ritual? What kind of magic? Talking magic to help them understand others, fighting magic to help them defend themselves, wildland magic to aid their foraging. What if I gave them talking magic? Perhaps that would help them understand me. Uh, they suddenly spoke in our language, which took them aback. They rewarded us with glistening reeds that could be woven into very strong baskets and then departed. Wonderful. Okay, so my instinct to not attack them was correct. And generally, I think that when there are strangers on your land, I wouldn't recommend just, just slaughtering them. Uh, except in the instance that they're, you know, foul brews, which are the, are the goat men uh, from oh, the chaos goat men from the King of Dragon Pass who are always up to no good, or chicken headed men, or the thousands of other hideous mutant varieties of them. But for the most part, if someone shows up on my land, you know, and there are some kids that I scared away, uh, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend violence against them unless it's absolutely necessary. All right, uh, these Sagarin people, they're still depicted as red on this map, which I guess still means that they don't like me. Um, but here we are in Earth season. So we've got a hunting bounty and a craft bounty, which means that we're going to produce more goods. And that is a wonderful thing, because goods are, are always good. To use an overly simplistic pun that I seem to um, be enamored of. All right, uh, what else have we got here? What else do we want to do? I think that we don't quite want to start sacrificing for rituals yet because that's a much better way. Uh, it's, a, it's a better idea to do that during uh, one of the seasons when it's not advisable to uh, leave your Tula. So, perhaps we will send out another emissary and see what we can accomplish. Uh, maybe what we can do is make an alliance. That sounds like a good idea to me. Um, who... Let's see, um, I would like to take a look at the manual for a second, because I don't know. Okay, oh, okay, we've got that, we've got that question mark sign. Uh, maybe that will help us. Okay, here we go. Um, the other clans of the Black Eagle Valley, typing a clan, okay. Nearby clans are marked with an N, okay. Um, in, uh, let's see here. Okay, and what about these symbols that I see here on the right-hand column? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, well... Okay. The bones tell me nothing, as it were. Um, so, let's see here. Ah, here we go. Okay, we can scroll up here on the right, the upper right-hand side. And it will say, uh, like us and hate us and so forth. Um, so we have three clans who like us. The Grey Wing, Shining Blossom, and Yellow Hill. We have, um, this is, this is great, this sorting mechanism here. Okay, uh, hate us, twin song, okay. Fear us, uh, mock us. We got three clans that mock us. Favors do, okay. Favors we owe, okay. Okay, what about, um, what about our current allies? Who is it that became my ally? They like us, but mock us. Okay, so those are not mutually exclusive. Okay, interesting. Uh, perhaps if we send an emissary, we'll be able to see who our allies are. That is perhaps a little bit confusing. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, we don't want to try... We don't want to try to propose an alliance with a clan that mocks us. We prefer to do that with a clan that likes us. Which I don't believe includes any of these Orlanthian... Orlanthian wheel scum. Uh... See, we tried proposing an alliance with these gray wings before. Okay, we're allied with the yellow hill. Okay, that's great. All right, I figured it out. Um, what about these other people who, who like us? They like us but mock us. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out here. Uh, these gray wing people like us. All right. I'm really going to figure this out. <laughs> I promise. All right. Okay, who likes us? Gray wing, shining blossom, and yellow hill. Okay, here we go. All right, shining blossom. Yellow Hill, do they mock us? Uh, okay, Gray Wing. Uh, let's try... Yeah, we, well, that was unsuccessful when we tried to ally with them before. So let's try proposing an alliance with these bright eyes here. give him a little gift because I can afford to do so. Your emissary Balandry journeys to Bright Eyes territory to propose an alliance. How does she make the approach? We can always help each other even if we don't have an obvious way to do so. No clan is strong without allies. Do you offer additional gifts? No. I've given them enough. They said we had made a persuasive case, but they had many matters to weigh before making any promises. Um, okay, so I, perhaps that means that we're going to make an alliance in the future, but making allies seems to be something that also kind of advances the story as well. So here we are in Dark Season. I have devoted a point to ritual, and so I'm going um, to make a couple sacrifices to see if I can uh, learn some useful blessings. Just testing the audio there. Uh, helps leaders develop their ability to the fullest. That sounds great to me. So I'm going to try making a sacrifice here to Rolandar. In the amount of eight goods. He, re he revealed the workings of an instruction blessing. Okay, great. We no longer have market and trading magic to support trade with all our regular trading partners. If we enlarged our shrine to Ekarna, we could support more ongoing trade. I fear other clans will soon stop sending caravans. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that I appreciate that notification, and we'll see if we can increase our Ekarna shrine to a, uh, a temple. Maybe we already have a temple, and we need a great temple. But anyway. The Bright Eyes Clan sends messengers to announce their upcoming staging of a hawking competition. All clans who worship Elmar are invited, including the Wheels. Winning brings pride to the clans who prevail. Some attendees enjoy the spirit of the day, while others take the advantage of the opportunity to engage in diplomacy. Well, diplomacy is my middle name, it seems, and so I'm going to go um, smooth out the differences with hostile rider clans. Uh, I like that idea. Let's see. We are hard to trade with because they regard us as inferiors. That does seem to be the case, doesn't it? As hawks course the sky above our heads, we talk to leaders from clans we would not normally encounter in a friendly way. Okay, well, hopefully that improved their relationship with us. Okay, so it's still dark season. Uh, let's see here. So, Ikarna. Uh, I've got 52 goods. What if I were to build a temple? 
then that would increase the number of trade routes that I could operate. And uh, that is what currently seems to be in jeopardy. So I am going to build. Uh, so with the Karna, I have um, Market and Silverton as well. I'm so right now it's storm season, so there there's two more turns in the year, and I'm relatively low on goods. So it seems to me that the best idea right now, since I uh, since it is possible to explore during storm season, in this game, uh, is to do a little bit more exploring. And I also put a point in exploration magic. Actually, one thing I want to check, because there is a, um, a god who is specifically devoted to exploring safe travel. Okay. Um, yeah, that, well, that's either that or Pathfinder sounds wonderful. I don't think Zarlin is necessarily worth building a, a temple to. But uh, in any event, see if we can learn a little bit more about the surrounding environment. If I went up there, huh? A delegation of rams requests parley at your border. These are not local rams, but traders from a kingdom to the south, known as Vastantes. Although distinction between various Orleanth worshipping peoples mean little to you, you, you do know their reputation as great warriors and musicians. And magicians. They have come from their homeland, hoping to trade for treasures. Their emissary offers goods, offers goods worth 60 cows for any treasure you own. Okay. The rams around here are from the winter tribe, but the Vastantes are a summer tribe, whatever that means. They're certainly colorfully dressed. Uh, if we trade them a treasure, it will leave the valley forever. Sixty cows is already generous. Okay. Must have a useless treasure to sell them. You know, I'm inclined to agree. I really like the idea of having 74 goods. I'm getting the greedy gimmies. Great warriors and magicians include, enjoy heavy influence among the Vistantes. So it would seem. They worship the same rebel gods as rams from hereabouts. Uh, Alright, let's see. Which one? Holy bowstring that makes a shrine to Osara sustainable with a few worshippers of the bowl of healing smoke and curing the sick. Well, I already have a shrine to Erissa, so I'm not that worried about the healing aspect. Um, what if I sell them this? They pronounce themselves satisfied with the exchange. All right, so I'm up to 74 goods. That's excellent. Uh, so I just sent an exploration mission. Hopefully they return, because the last one I sent didn't return. And hopefully that didn't result in uh, from me exploring during storm season. <laughs> Perhaps that's an overly risky thing to do, but this game hasn't given me any indication that that's the case. The clan mood is optimistic, so my clan mood is finally looking positive uh, for the first time in this game. I'm very happy about that. So we, you know, we, we have a setback once in a while, but we're making very good progress. Um, now I've got 78 goods. What do we want to do here? Uh, did I lose a trade route? No, uh, I didn't lose a trade route. I've got seven trade routes going. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that now that I have a temple to Ikarna, I, uh, I have the magic necessary to support the, all that trade. Let's see here. Um, convert pastures to fields. We can start another. Okay. Well, since, I, since during storm season, it still seems like a good practice to keep everything kind of local to our own, our own Tula or our own lands. Uh, perhaps that's what we want to do next. Is do a uh, do a venture. <laughs> okay, you can do this crafting ritual that increases goods. That sounds great to me. I'm just taking a look at here at the, the possibilities. Okay. Uh, so it seems, it, yeah, it seems like there isn't anything that we need to immediately do, and we don't want to. Um, potentially irritate our people by doing a uh, uh, doing a ritual that isn't necessarily, or doing a, a venture that isn't necessarily going to help us significantly. 
says that we have insufficient warriors uh, and that adventure is still possible. All right, why don't we try this? Why don't we try this crafting ritual here. Our crafters were pleased to make goods of unusual quality. Um, Ernaste praised the fine glaze of the pottery and the elegantly copied archives. Excellent. If there's one thing that my yeah, my people excel at. It's it's making money and trading for stuff. Valendry died of old age. We will not forget her ability to drive a hard but fair bargain. She was an incredible asset to the clan, and that I'm definitely gonna we're definitely gonna feel that loss. Um, thankfully, she's trained other people in our clan well, to uh, with and, and and taught them the ways of the silver tongue. We're back from our expedition, which took us to the northwest. We explored an area I can only describe as untamed and largely featureless. Well, nobody got killed, and so, I, you know, I'm fairly happy. Okay. Uh, so now it is sacred time. I'm going to put two into ritual because I plan to perform the ritual that allows me to cross the river uh, during this particular year. Put one in crafts, so I got 64 goods going. And it's largely because I, there's so much upkeep that's required for all these shrines and temples that I have. Uh, maintaining our shrines took 19 cows and goods worth 38 cows, and it is um, it is using a bunch of cows. And so I think uh, another thing I'm going to try to do is trade for cows, because my herds are, are dwindling a little bit. Uh, okay, let's see here. The seer spun to a field of sunflowers. This meant our foragers would be able to gather much food this year. Okay, that's excellent. Put one into war, because you never know what will happen. Uh... All right. Put one into pastures, and we'll proceed. Andaro, chieftain of the Chav Ashdai, has been removed from that role. Their leaders replaced him with Lankarn. Under Indaro, the Chav Ashdai held us in poor esteem. If we give them a gift in the next season or two, we might have a chance to get relations with them back on the right track. Okay, well, that's good, because those Chav Ashdai people, perhaps because of this, you know, leader, were being particularly obnoxious. Uh, the clan mood is optimistic. Uh, we are up to seventy-nine goods, which I think um, is all, is pretty, is basically as high as they've ever been. Uh, insufficient warriors. Okay. Good foraging omen. Okay, so we've got a couple of things that we can do here. I'm indicated by this left-hand side of the screen. How about these Chabash die people? Let's see what we can see. If we can mend the fences here. I'm going to send an emissary. Uh, Erastus has very good diplomacy, and uh, we can certainly afford to give some gifts, and that's just what we'll do. We sent Erastus to give goods worth eight cows to the Chavashdai clan. Erastus reports the Chavashdai accepted our gifts but made no efforts to praise them. I think they are more favorably disposed toward us now, though wheels may not may try not to show that they might like us, right? So basically, they grudgingly accepted our gifts and grudgingly decided to um, to treat us better than they have in the past, or at least that's my hope. Yeah, as we can see, they're no longer depicted here in red. Instead, they're purple, which is an improvement on the, the previous year. Um, we were also told that we should forage. And I believe you do that using the explore command. It's easier to find food outside the clan lands, okay. All right, so that's in the Chavashdai lands. We don't necessarily, we don't want to go there. Now we're outside the Chavashdai Tula if we go up there. Um, you catch foreigners hunting in your wildlands. They travel on foot and hunt with dogs. And they will die like dogs. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to kill them. They might be Votanki, a nomadic people who live in a forested region to the east. You have heard of them before, but no one in your clan has ever met any of them. Okay. Inform ram slavers of their presence in the area. No, we're not going to do that. I don't particularly want to help the rams, or particularly when, when it comes to taking slaves. Um, feed them, I don't know about that. Maybe they're civilized wolf people. That is a possibility, isn't it? And you don't want to, uh, as I learned in the uh, King of Dragon Pass game, you don't want to antagonize werewolves if you ever find them. Uh, Votank, who roams the forest to the east, is like Helor before he ascended to Elmal's side. If allowed to run wild, those dogs will one day bite our foragers. 
All right, so maybe I'll um, I'll let them off with a warning. Although they understood only a crude version of the trade tongue, our words instilled fear in them all the same. They thanked us for their for our clemency with the gift of red gems, which our traders said were worth two cows. So it seems like it was a win-win. All right, so we have a foraging mission going on, and um, all right, so I think I'm going to take a break here because. Um, I'm going to make sure to learn that story about crossing the river for the next time that we're together. Um, also, on the, uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties that occurred in the middle of this episode. I'm not quite sure what happened. It could just be because um, I was running my, my audio workstation software on this computer that can be kind of taxing on the CPU, and um, maybe it was sort of the residual. I, mean, I wasn't running it while I was playing the game, but um, maybe the sort of residual effects of having run it uh, created a problem because uh, sometimes weird things happen after I've run Pro Tools without resetting the machine. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll uh, I'll see you all again soon, and we'll get this ritual going. And uh, also, I'll see you soon in the uh, the Banner Saga three stream that I'm going to be doing on uh, on June on excuse me on July 26th. Bye bye for now.